Hey, what's going on, you guys? Rex the Rebel here. Uh, we need to talk about some things. There's been some talk among the uh, Democratic candidates, uh, especially Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang. And their proposition is to either decriminalize, which is Yang's plan, or legalize, uh, as Tulsi Gabbard has uh, recently offered or proposed, all drugs to decriminalize or legalize all, all drugs. Let's talk about the difference between decriminalization and legalization first. Decriminalization means that even though, uh, it, it decriminalization, decriminalization means you can do the drugs without getting a punishment necessarily. You won't be viewed as a criminal uh, you will be viewed as a victim, right? A victim of substance abuse. Even if you aren't abusing the substance and you just want to do it, and even if you have willingly become one. I mean, most people who, in my opinion, if you're someone who is on heroin or something and you're addicted to it, you've chosen to become addicted to it. You did heroin in the first place. I don't, I don't see an out for you. I don't see like, oh, I did it. I didn't expect to get addicted what? <laughs> no. That's not how heroin works. And if you started doing it, what did you expect would happen? I I don't know. Um, but, but decriminalization is when, if you are caught doing it, you will not be punished according to the law. You will be rehabilitated. Uh, rehabil uh, rehabilitated. So you won't be treated, you won't be tried criminally. If it's legalized, then that means the substance itself is regulated, it's on the market, you can sell it, and it's just like alcohol. You can buy it somewhere, at a dispensary or, or at, a, at a, just your, your local store, you know. Um, maybe some stores will be barred from selling it, I have no idea. This is a whole new concept people are talking about um, in, like, genuine, genuine concerns. Like, usually it's just a philosophical... Uh, discussion among like libertarians and now we're actually talking about this as like it might be an actual thing it shouldn't be i'm all for legalizing marijuana even though i hate the smell and i don't like the way people act when they're on it it's very annoying and obnoxious and i also believe that psychedelics some psychedelics should be should be uh legalized as well um, not just decriminalized but legalized um, so it can actually be distributed, um, hopefully safely, um, and contained if anything were to happen with someone, maybe they, uh, overdosed. Um, but I don't believe in legalizing crack or meth or heroin or crocodile or anything like that, you know, ketamine. These should not be things which, th these should not be legal. These drugs should not be legal. And... The, uh, the main criticisms that I've seen is, oh, the war on drugs is a failure. The war on drugs might be a failure based off of the way that they're going about it, which is to make, mo to make money and, uh, and profit to, uh, the mil uh, to the prison industrial complex. But a war on drugs is not inherently a bad thing, just like the war on poverty is not inherently a bad thing. The way that they've gone about it is not is not the best and not the smartest. But the idea that a war on poverty is somehow bad, that's not a bad thing. There should be a war on poverty. What was Martin Luther King's vision? It was just Martin Luther King Day. What was his thing? To go to war against poverty. To end it. War, the war on poverty and the war on drugs is not an inherently bad thing. And... If someone is, um, if someone is doing some of those more hardline substances, you've chosen to do that. No one has told you. Um, if you're going to go down the the route of, oh well, marijuana is not a gateway drug, so you know if it's not, then someone chose to do something like crack. Someone chose that. 
after everything that they know can happen, after all the damage it can do, after all of the issues that it causes not only the user but other people around them. I'm sorry, but I hope you get arrested. I do. If you, if you're, we have to make decisions and we have to face the consequences of them. And there are certain, certain issues where people are compelled to do certain actions. If you're in an impoverished area, you're more likely to commit a crime, whether it's uh, theft or even just loitering. A lot of people who are homeless, they get arrested for loitering. Um, so when, when you talk about personal responsibility, we have to be careful to make sure that we're actually talking about a situation where the person is truly free to make this decision without too much of an external influence. Now, obviously that's not, that's not, uh, possible. There's always going to be some form of external influence guiding you in a way, whether you realize it or not. But, um... And then that gets into the whole argument of whether free will actually exists or whether everything is, is determined. And if you're going to ask that question, I would, you know, look into Sam Harris uh, for that, not, not me. But um, but if, if you do something like heroin or cocaine, you're choosing to do that. No one's telling you to do that. And if somebody is telling you to do that because they're your friend, there's this thing. It's a word. It's powerful. You can say no. You can say no. All right. You can tell your friends, nah, peer pressure is not going to work. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like snorting this white powder, which can probably give me brain damage. It might make my nose bleed. I don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like getting addicted to that. No, thank you. And if you feel that you can't say that, you should probably leave those friends behind and not talk to them anymore. But the idea that we're going to legalize these hardcore substances. I'm sorry, but that's the dumbest fucking shit I've ever heard. I mean, really? With everything that alcohol does, with all of the violence and all of the uh, crime that is associated with alcohol consumption, with all of the uh, suicidal, uh, suicide-related issues, with all of the uh, with all of the deaths that are caused from drunk driving. This is from alcohol being served legally, where you can go pretty much anywhere, the fucking gas station, and get alcohol, and it's heavily regulated. You can't, you know, you can get in trouble for being publicly publicly intoxicated. Um, some places won't serve after a certain time. Um, some places will actually prevent you from buying a certain amount of, uh, of alcohol, depending on um, the place that you go. But we already have enough, we already have enough shit because of alcohol. We already have enough problems caused by alcohol, which is a regulated and legal substance. You now want to add on top of that all of these other drugs? That'll just exacerbate the issue tenfold. People don't have as easy access to these drugs, to meth, to cocaine like they do alcohol. If people have widespread access to these drugs, more people will take them because people are fucking stupid. If those people start to do these drugs on a more mass scale because it's more widely available, we're going to have more problems. All the problems that come from people doing these drugs already exist regardless of whether it's legal or illegal. Just like the problem with alcohol already exists, regardless of whether it's legal or illegal. Now you want to add that? You want to exacerbate that issue? I'm sorry, but you're a fucking idiot if you support that. That is a dumb fucking thing to say. We're going to legalize all drugs. Are you on drugs? That Because that's really fucking dumb. I, I, do, I don't understand. I don't agree with that. I will never agree with that. If, if you're someone who if you're someone who does one of those hardcore drugs and you get arrested for it or you get in trouble for it good I'm glad I hope you go to jail I want you to go to jail maybe then you'll stop doing it which you won't but all you know someone will say oh well if they keep doing it then maybe we can punish them no <laughs> it's not about that 
they had the choice, the very simple, easy choice, not to do this very dangerous substance in the first place. The lights just turned on all around me. They could have chosen not to do this in the first place, and they did. I don't know what to tell you. You know, skydiving, if you choose to skydive after knowing all the dangers of it, and you learn the statistics of like the death rate of doing that, and you choose to do it anyway as a novice, as someone who had never done it before, and you get injured, I don't, I don't have sympathy for you. If you go to North Korea, and then they imprison you for whatever, let's say that you're like the, that American, uh, the American couple who went to North Korea a few years ago, and then they were uh, captured and kidnapped by the North Korean government, and we had to try to negotiate to get them out. I'm glad they got kidnapped by the North Korean government. You went to North Korea, you fucking idiots. Learn your fucking lesson. You should have never gone. The people that drew a, a, a drone right by the Iranian uh, military base, like, I can't remember when it was. It was around the um, latter months of 2019. Someone flew a, uh, a drone near an Iranian military base, and they got arrested. Uh, yes, you should get arrested for that. You're flying a drone into a military base of a foreign government. If you flew your drone near the base of, a, of an American government, the same thing. If you choose to do something that fucking stupid, you deserve to be punished. The consequences are, you deserve them. I don't feel bad for you. If you make such a dumb decision and something bad happens to you, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad something bad happened to you. Maybe you'll learn from your mistake, because that because you're dumb. You deserve everything that happens to you. Congratulations. You you go to China, and, and then you get, um, like, what's going on with China right now. You decide to fly to China, right? They can't fly out, but people can still fly in, which, well, I think you can fly into some places. Let's say you fly into a different part of China, but then you go to the parts of China that are actually known to have the virus, and then you get the virus... Sorry, but you're staying in China. You're not coming back to the U.S. And uh, if you get sick because of it and die, glad, I'm, I hope you do die. <laughs> That's on you. You made that stupid fucking choice, and now you got to live with the consequences. Now, obviously, we don't take that to every single extreme. Just because somebody makes a mistake doesn't mean that they have to have that held over themselves their entire life. But it depends on what it is. And if the mistake is something that dumb, especially when these people are adults, you know, they're not teenagers, they're not, they're not young 20-somethings, they're adults. But it, the, the peer pressure issue is something I've never understood personally. I've never had peer pressure be something that actually affected me. Um, it's just, it, I'm not affected by, I ultimately do whatever the fuck I want to do anyway. Granted, not truthfully, because I have no fucking money. But in terms of, like, being able to make choices for myself, uh, regardless of what people around me want me to do, I don't do it. Unless I want to, and if I don't, then I'm not going to do it. Um, and people know not to pass me blunts now when I'm hanging out with friends. Um, because they know I'm not going to do it. They know that I'm not going to say... Uh, oh, yeah, sure. I mean, you've only asked me 13,000 times. I'm going to do it now. Nope. Not interested. Um, I drink sometimes, and I actually just drank the other day for my birthday. Um, but I really don't drink that often, and when I do, uh, it's in the safe environment with friends who I trust. Um, but, but I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't do drugs. I don't, I don't like them. Um. But it, but the issue with the war on drugs argument is that because it's created a black market, that makes it bad. There's a black market regardless. There's always going to be a black market. There are always going to be people who sell on a market that is not regulated. That happens now. 
I mean, just go down south and you have all these people making moonshine that's not legally regulated. And it wouldn't be legally regulated because of the toxicity of it. People do that. You, you can go all across the world. And there, there, there are black markets everywhere. But the black, but the black market's not something you can just drive to. <laughs> it's not a place, you know. It, it's not easy to get to. It's not like there's a sign on the side of the road. It's like, black market, turn left. It's difficult. I don't know how to get drugs randomly. I, 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 I can't just be like, oh, you know what? I want to try some fentanyl. Here's what I'm gonna do. And then just go down the street and manage. You can't just go around asking random people if they know where to find the nearest drug dealer or, you know, gun dealer. You, you can't, you can't do that. That's, you know, I mean, I guess you can. <laughs> but there will always be, there will always be a black market. And even if there is a black market, so what? If you choose to deal outside of the legal system, you're going to get in trouble. Why is that? Why is that like surprising? If you sell a drug on the black market, you're a dealer, you're a criminal, you get arrested. If you produce the stuff, you're going to get arrested. And if you interact and associate with a dealer or a producer as someone who hopes to consume it as a, as a fucking idiot, you get in trouble. If it's decriminalized, you have this issue where, oh, well, I only did the drug. I didn't make it. I didn't sell it. I only, I only consumed it. But the issue with that is you associated with a criminal. You went out of your way to speak with the criminal. They didn't coerce you. You went to go find them. You associated with a known criminal. So even if you do decriminalize it, it doesn't really change the fact that the drug itself is still criminal. It's just you won't be treated like one for using the chemical, uh, the, the illegal substance. So ultimately, then the, the logical conclusion would be legalize it. But then if you legalize it, that market's still going to exist because there will be people who make it cheaper on the black market. There will be people who make it more extreme. Um, it, it it will be it will be like harder stuff than the stuff that they have on the market still be regulated, and you'll probably be able to get an unlimited supply. Whereas you probably won't be able to get an unlimited supply um, at the at the dispensaries that people would most likely have if it became legal. It'll still exist. There will still be people who run the drug cartels and who will probably scare uh, legal businesses, and basically it'll become a mob situation. They control those businesses through their cartel, and those people, those legal businesses, pay the cartel not to kill them. And uh, we see what happened in Mexico. That didn't work out too well, where the government tried to stop them. That didn't work out too well. Um, and also, the cartel has banked on the war on drugs, but they were already there. They already existed. It's not like the cartels became a thing because of the war on drugs. They were already there. It's just they've banked on that, on on that policy and on that war on drugs. The war on drugs is a good idea. It's just the way it's been implemented is bad. You understand? I'm pretty sure you guys understand. But but the idea that we're going to legalize meth and and cocaine and ketamine and stuff like that. The idea that that's going to be something uh, that we that we should do, and that that's a smart idea and that's a good idea. Nope, that is a dumb fucking idea. Uh, and if you support that idea, you're a dumb fucking person, with maybe some good ideas, but uh, that that's a that's a doozy. <laughs> that's a dumb one. I I don't know what to say about that aside from everything that I've already said the past nineteen minutes. But I, I just I don't see how we can come to that conclusion. And uh, there's some people who've said that it's immoral because it, it uh, prevents you from being free. You're not free to do everything. You're not free to shout fire into a crowded room. You are not free to drive while intoxicated. There are plenty of things that you are not free to do. 
and there are perfectly reasonable explanations for why. Your right to do these drugs and associate with people who do these drugs. That is not something you are guaranteed. It's just not. If you engage in behavior which is dangerous, and then that behavior is noticed, so it becomes unlawful, and you get caught doing it, you deserve to get arrested. You deserve to go to jail. You deserve the punishment. And if you do it in the first place, if you decide to consume it in the first place, I don't feel any sympathy for you. You're dumb as fuck. You know all of the problems that these things arise. You know the issues of being able to speak and communicate with these criminals who deal it and make it. These people aren't good people. They don't just deal drugs. They hurt people usually. They, they manipulate people. They're not just drug dealers. The vast majority of them are criminal in other ways. If you choose to associate with them, if you choose to do these drugs, despite all of the warnings against it, that's on you, man. And whatever happens to you, I don't care. Because you've decided to do that yourself after everything. And the other issue is, or the other argument that people make is, oh, well, we tell kids not to do it. But kids, of course, if you tell the kids not to do it, they're going to do it anyway. That's not true. Maybe some children will. Little little dipshits that want to be contrarians and be like, they told me not to do it. Oh, I'm going to fucking do it. Yeah, rebel bitch. I'm going to do what you said you don't want me to do. I'm going to drink all day and party all night and fuck as many bitches. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I just turned into Macho Man. Oh, yeah. Snap into a Slim Jim like a snap in your neck. Oh, yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> um, but if you're if you're a child, a child, yes, child, five year old doing meth. Um, if if you're a young person, a teenager, and you choose to do drugs or any behavior that your parents and society has told you, hey, you probably shouldn't do that. It's not good for you. For your own good, don't do it. And you choose to do it anyway. That's not freedom of choice. That's contrarianism. You're doing it simply because you're going against and rebelling against the people that told you to do something. You didn't choose to make that to make that decision because it's genuinely in your heart. You chose to do it because somebody told you not to. Reverse psychology. But being a contrarian is not an excuse for you not to get in trouble. It's not. If you choose to go out of your way to do something that someone told you not to do simply because they told you not to do it, you are not absolved if you're dumb enough to do the opposite of what people tell you because you think that that's fun, right? You've chosen to do it for no other reason aside from the fact that they've told you not to do it. You're a fucking idiot. And anything that happens to you is your own damn fault. And I don't care. And no, no one else should either. So I, I don't know. I don't agree with legalizing all drugs, and I don't know if you guys agree, I don't know if you guys disagree, but please let me know um, what your comments are on this matter, and what you think of Tulsi Gabbard saying this and, and suggesting this. Um, interestingly, Bernie Sanders is not for legalizing all drugs. He's against most drugs, although he is for legalizing uh, marijuana and I think decriminalizing um, psychedelics. But uh, again, psychedelics and weed... It's fine, um, even though I'm not a fan of them. I've known people that do psychedelics, and when they're on them, they are nuts. <laughs> I, I don't like it. I've walked in on a group of people who had, like, like, like they get a lot of people who do psychedelics, they schedule, um, like, group sessions of when they've all agreed to do it. I've seen what that looks like. It's not for me. It's, I had to leave. I had to leave. I, walk, I walked in with two of my friends, um, and in the living room, these people were sitting there, barely any clothes on, some no clothes on at all. They were all sweating. They were all just completely out of their minds. I walked in for like three seconds. I saw that. I walked back out. I was like, nope, fuck this. And then my friend John, he's like, what's going on? It's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not, I'm not going to be a part of this bullshit. And I walked out, and he left with me, and the other guy left with us. 
and they're like, oh, so what are we going to do? And I was like, I don't know, somewhere far away from this bullshit. But I've seen what that stuff does and how it makes people, what it turns them into. It's gross. I don't like it. But it doesn't matter if I like it or dislike it. It's them choosing that, making that decision, not hurting anybody. The difference between psychedelics and crack is those things are two completely different drugs. One doesn't necessarily harm the user, many of which it doesn't last that long, and then you're fine and actually kind of calms you down. The other one makes you go nuts, makes you go insane. It can make you violent. It can, it can hurt you and others. Those are two completely different things. Crack should not be legal. Meth should not be legal. Heroin should not be legal. All the other hardcore drugs that are affiliated with those or that have the same potency and the same dangerous um, qualities that those have, which can affect more than just the user, all those should be illegal. And if you do them, you deserve to get in trouble. If you do them and you get caught doing them, you should go to jail. And I don't feel sorry for you. That is all we got to say today. Uh, that is all I got to say today. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really means a lot. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace out.